Now bow your head so we can pray. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for what you've done thus far. We thank you for the prayers that we've heard. We thank you for the songs that we've heard. And we thank you, Father, for your scripture being read. Now, Father, as I stand before your people, I pray that you would move me aside. Speak clearly, Father, that your people may hear. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great, great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. Hebrews chap chapter 12 is a follow-up from Hebrews chapter 11. In Hebrews chapter 11, we learned about the faithful. We learned about the things that they went through for the word of God. Toward the end of Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible begins to tell us that some people were burned, some people were sawn asunder for the word of God. And then it moves into chapter 12 where it says, seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, all these individuals who went through these things for us as an example of what we are going to go through. And then the Bible says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. Amen. I was looking up this word, unforgiveness, and I found that in the medical books, in some medical books, it was classified as a disease. Matter of fact, Dr. Stephen Standiford, he's a chief surgeon of the Cancer uh, Treatment Center of America, he said, refusing to forgive makes people sick and keeps them that way. Unforgiveness is a fatal poison. You see, unforgiveness cuts us off from forgiveness. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 12, the Bible says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then it goes on to say in verse 15, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. I looked up in the book of the faith I live by, and Ellen White wrote this, he who is unforgiving cuts off the very channel through which alone he can, he can receive mercy from God. We should not think that unless those who have injured us confess the wrong, we are justified in withholding from them our forgiveness. In other words, just because somebody don't come ask you for forgiveness, don't mean you are not to forgive them. You ought to forgive them anyhow. Unforgiveness cuts us off from prayer. In Mark chapter 11 and verse 25, the Bible says, and when ye stand praying, forgive, if you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Before we pray, we have to have a forgiving heart. If you're unforgiving and standing up to prayer, God is not going to hear your prayer. I tell you, unforgiveness is a fatal poison. It poisons us up from worship. In the book of Matthew, in chapter five, we find the Bible says, when you come to the altar and you bring in your gifts, and your gifts not only include money, but your talents, your willingness to serve, when you come before God to, the, to his altar and you remember that you have ought against your brother, you go get that right and then come back. So when you come to worship, you ought to have a forgiving heart because unforgiveness will cut you off from your worship. It was said in Sabbath school, and I'll say it again. What is true of individuals is true of the family. So what you find in the individual is what you're gonna find in their family. What you find true about the family, you'll find true about the church. 
Because how you act in a family, you bring to the church. What's true about the church is also true about the cities and states. And whatever's true about the states is true about the nations. And the Bible tells us in Matthew 28 that we ought to be teaching all nations, all nations, that we ought to be baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost, right? Teaching them to observe, to observe what? Whatsoever God has commanded us. And this morning, I want to tell you that forgiveness is a command. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 37, the Bible says, Judge not that ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you'll be forgiven. Amen. So I entitled this morning's sermon, Forgiveness. Saints of God, without forgiveness, there is no future. Without forgiveness, there is no freedom. Because as long as you're holding on to unforgiveness, you are shackled by the enemy. Without forgiveness, there is no recovery. You can't recover from the guilt that is filling your heart. Without forgiveness, there is no healing. And saints of God, without forgiveness, you will never change. You have no chance to change. And change is a vital part of the Christian experience. The Bible tells us that in, in many ways that we are not to remain the same. Amen. The Bible says that when God comes to us, he makes us new creatures. Amen. We don't remain the same. We have different thoughts and different attitudes. God changes us. But if you are holding on to an unforgiving spirit, you will never change. Amen. And if you don't change, you're not going to make it. Then you ask the question, well, how in the world could I have a forgiving spirit in this world full of pain? This world that's, that's full of animosity towards one another. This world with so many shady and shysty people. Even in the church. And in your house. Is this possible or is this just a theory? Is it just something that, 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 that God has just put out there for us? Or is it something that we can do? Saints of God, I want to tell you, you cannot do it on your own. Forgiveness is not something that you can well up in your heart and then do it on your own. Forgiveness is a divine characteristic. It is given to us by God. Did you know that repentance is given by God? In other words, you will never come to repentance. You will never even have a thought in your mind to repent if it wasn't for God. Amen. Thus is the same with forgiveness. In order to be able to forgive, you have to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And Jesus tried to illustrate this to the disciples on several occasions. And one occasion that sticks out in my mind is found in Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 8, when I say that, that means turn to it. Matthew chapter 18. And we're going to look at verse 21. Now you follow me. I'm not going to read it, but you follow me. Is that all right? Matthew chapter 18, beginning with verse 21 we find Peter coming to Jesus. And he's coming to Jesus because he wants to, you know, sometimes we ask questions so that we can get an answer that we can follow up on. In other words, Peter was having issues with somebody and he wanted to know, if I forgave them seven times, have I did my part? So he asked Jesus, look, if I forgive, how, how often ought to forgive my brother when he do me wrong? seven times and he thought he was doing something because the pharisaical law said three times and that's it so peter was like man seven that's the complete number so he went to jesus and asked him this and jesus said no not seven times but seven times 70. now you know peter st st stepped back with that one 
490 times. Now, I just want you to know that's not an arbitrary number. Do you know God means what he says? Even when God was illustrating this thing as a parable, he meant what he said. Seven times 70. What's seven times 70? 490. Does that sound familiar? 70 weeks are determined upon my people. Uh, uh, we got some Bible scholars here, right? That's prophetic, amen? So the Jews had 490 years to get it right. 490 times. Now, could you imagine if you were saying the same individual that, that keeps messing, and you know there are people like that, right? You forgive them and they come back and do the same thing again. The Bible says that 490 times you forgive them. Look, by the time you get to 12, <laughs> come on now. You see, God intended us to get this understanding that if, if, if you've given, forgiven somebody 490 times, you have a heart of forgiveness. Amen. You have developed a habit of forgiving. Amen. Oh, y'all not following me. So Jesus gave an illustration. Are you following me? Jesus said, okay, look, there was a king and he had some administrators and they were coming in showing me their books. And one of them showed up and owed me, come on, y'all can tell me, right? Cause you're reading. Owed me what? 10,000 talents, right? And he said, uh, but I don't have it. So the king said, okay, you know, the, you know the rules. Since you don't have it, then you gotta go to jail and work it off until you can pay me what you owe me. Then the Bible says that servant fell down and worshiped. And he begged him, please give me time and I'll pay you. And that king said, he had compassion and said, okay, I forgive you all that debt. That's a lot of debt. Have anybody ever owed you money? Come on now. If it's five dollars, come on now, you know how we are. I gave them five dollars and they never gave it back. This king forgave him the entire debt. The Bible don't, doesn't say that, that he gave him time to pay. Are you following me? Okay, I'll give you time to pay. I'll give you six weeks and then you can pay. No, the Bible says he forgave him the entire debt. Now here's the part that got me. Then that servant went away and he found somebody that owed him. Are y'all supposed to be reading? A hundred pence, right? The Bible says he took him by the neck. Uh, did y'all read that? The Bible says he took him by the neck and said, pay me what you owe me. And this guy fell on his knees and did the same thing that, the, that he did when he owed a debt, a much greater debt, and asked him, man, just give me time and I'll pay you. He was like, nope, and threw him in jail. Now remember, this king forgave him a million times more than what he was dealing with with this fellow servant. And some folk were watching and seen it. The Bible said they felt sorry. And they went and told. And they say, King, this guy that you let go all that money, he just found my brother and then put him in jail. So that king called him back and said, man, you forgot all that I let you off of? All the money that you owed me and I said you don't have to give me a dime and then you come to this guy who not only really owe you much and you gonna throw him in jail? The Bible says he cast him, his family. Did, did y'all read that? Yeah, cast him in the prison, right? Now, this biblical illustration is telling us, first of all, we owe everything to God. Are y'all following me? You know, the Bible is full of concepts of God forgiving us, right? In Psalms 103, it says, God, he said, as far as the east is from the west, 
So far hath he removed our transgression from us. God said that I'll cast right, your sins into the depths of the sea and remember them no more. That's forgiveness, right? Jesus gave us a promise. If you confess your sins, right? He said sins, all of them, whatever they are, however bad they are, whatever level you think it is, he said if you confess them, I'm faithful and I'm just and I'll forgive you. And I'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Throughout the Bible, we read over and over again that God is willing to forgive us our sins. We even see Jesus on the cross. Oh, y'all follow me? On the cross, dying. And he forgave somebody of their sins. Forgiveness is a key attribute that God has shown us. Amen. And we all desire and need forgiveness. Amen. Some of us need forgiveness for what we did today. It's the truth anyhow. Some of us woke up with a bad attitude because we still mad at somebody for what they done. Last year. Come on. This concept of forgiveness, God is so bored with us. God has put up with all our madness. We continually go against God every single day. And we have the audacity to fall on our knees and ask God to forgive us. And some of us for the same thing every day. Christianity is a religion of forgiveness. It is the basis of what makes us Christians, Christ-like, forgiveness. And God continually forgives us. We just read in Ephesians chapter four, the Bible says, forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. So God has given us a solution for the issues that we have and that solution is forgiveness. Every other sin seems to fall on this concept of an unforgiving spirit. You know we hurt other people because of what other people who wasn't those folk did to us. Are y'all following me? Because we don't want to end up in the same condition that we was when that person hurt us. You know what we call it? We call it baggage. Are you following me? You still remember what somebody else did to you and you putting it on somebody else. It's an unforgiving spirit. It's a spirit that has caused us to alienate ourselves from one another. It is prevalent in families. Come on now. Because when somebody in our family does something to us, we really take it serious. Oh, you did that? I ain't talking to you forever. Are you following me? Come on now. Some of us hadn't talked to some of our siblings in years. I'm talking about an unforgiving spirit. Now, I want to say this out on the outset. I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to me as well. Amen. And, and God has shown me that this concept, this, this spirit, this unforgiving spirit is prevalent in God's church. And it's among us because we have developed this thing and we have cultivated this thing in our families. And thus, because we've done it in our family, we translated it to the church. A spirit of unforgiveness. Then the question is asked, when are you telling me no matter what somebody does to me, I'm supposed to forgive them? No matter what you've done to God, he continues to forgive you. Now, I'm sure that we agree that this concept of forgiveness is not a human trait. Forgiveness is not a part of our carnal nature. We are more inclined to not forgive than to forgive. Now, I just said the same thing three times. We need the help of God in order to have 
a spirit of forgiveness. Because that spirit of forgiveness is the self-same spirit that saves us. Hmm. This word translated forgive in the scripture is actually a Greek word meaning to grant as a favor. That is in kindness, pardon, or rescue. Another definition is grace. Have you ever heard of grace? Yeah. It's undeserved favor. It's, it's giving somebody something that they don't deserve. Do you know if it wasn't for grace, you wouldn't be here today? If, if, if it wasn't for grace, you wouldn't have woke up this morning? If it wasn't for grace, you wouldn't have your family? Are, are you following me? Grace is unmerited favor. Grace is something that God pours out to us. Amen? And get this. God gives us grace even when we're acting up. I was going to say acting a fool. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? When we're out there doing what we want to do. And I just want to say this. That time is running out. We're living in the last days of earth's history. We don't have time to be messing around with this concept or this spirit of unforgiveness. Because we need to get right with God, amen? amen. And, 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 and what I'm talking about this morning is that we need, we need as individuals to get right with God. You know who you, don't, you have not forgiven yet. You know the person in your life who, who still you haven't talked to. Who still, you forgot why you got mad at him in the first place, but you still haven't forgave him. There are even some of us who have just started a grudge. And allowing that spirit of unforgiveness to fill us. And do you know that that spirit translates to your children and to those who are near you? Come on now. Just because you don't forgive somebody, you talk everybody else into not forgiving them. But here's the funny thing. When we mess up, we want people to hurry up and forgive us. Isn't it true? Right? We, we tell them, oh, I didn't mean to and I this and that. And then we get upset with them because they don't forgive us. But we are the one who gave them that spirit of unforgiveness. <laughs> now, I want, I want to tell you this. Forgiveness is a divine attribute, and it is to be exercised among God's people. Whatever somebody does to you, you ought to begin to be willing to forgive them immediately after they did it. Whew! That was hard to get out. Can you imagine? Soon as somebody do you wrong, as soon as somebody do you wrong, you are ready to forgive them. Yeah, I see these blank looks. Because think about it now. As soon as you mess up, God is already waiting to forgive you. Are you following me? God doesn't say, okay, wait a little while before you ask me because I got to get over this. Right? Isn't that isn't what we say? Oh, you ought to go talk to them. No, I ain't talking to them right now. Because I might not say what I need to be saying. And weeks go by. Months go by. And we don't understand, but when you, when you harbor an unforgiving spirit, it is eating away at you. Spiritually and physically. And then it even messes with your mental state of mind. Like that, that article said, it, it, it's a, like a disease. So whatever somebody has done to you, you ought to have a spirit of forgiveness. Whatever somebody is even doing to you right now, you ought to have a spirit of forgiveness. Now I ought to bring clarity to this. Just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean you release them from debt 
or from what they have actually done. You are not to condone the sin or the attitude or the, the misbehavior of the individual who has done you wrong. If somebody stole something from you, forgive them, but don't leave your purse around them. Are you following me? Because we get into trouble because we forgive somebody and we pretend it never happened. It happened. The pain, the upset, it was real. But you still ought to forgive. But don't put yourself in a position to cause them to do the same wrong again. It's for you and for them. Are you following me? In Luke chapter 17, turn to Luke 17. Verse 3. Are you ready for this? Luke chapter 17, verse 3 says, Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against you, in other words, if your brother do you wrong, if your brother do something bad to you, if your brother do something that upsets you, the Bible says, do what? Rebuke him. And if he repent, do what? Forgive him. So we need to let people, one of, one of our problems is that somebody will do us wrong. And you, you know, some people can do something wrong to you or say something wrong to you, hurt your feelings, get you upset, and don't even realize they did it. Right. You don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, those people who know me, I have a, I'm going to use Elder Hall. <laughs> That's all right. those, those people who know Elder Hall, he has a way of saying things that if you don't know him, you can take it wrong. Are you following me? And, 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 and after he just said it, and instead of you trying to get clarity or talking to him about it, you get upset. Are you following me? And, 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 and you get upset and then you go tell everybody else about the wrong he's done to you. This, this is the spirit of unforgiveness raising up in you. Right? And the first thing that whoever you are talking to should tell you is follow Matthew 18. Go talk to him. I can't talk to him right now. Are you following me? The idea is that we need to find out we need to let that person know. We need to inform them of what they have done. Now, granted, there are people who do things and they know what they're doing. <laughs> but the Bible tells us also, those who deceitfully use you, you need to forgive them too even if they know what they're doing. And, and, and we need to understand that forgiveness is not just, it's not a feeling. Y'all hear me? No, no, forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgiveness is a choice. Because when somebody do you wrong, you don't feel like forgiving them. Okay, I'll talk about myself. I don't forgive like, feel like forgiving you, especially if you do something to hurt me or my family. This is me. You can, you can do a lot of stuff to me and I just let it go. But boy, my wife, Lord help me. You say something against my wife, that's all bad. You say something against my family, that's all bad. I can take it, but don't mess with them. Well, I know that's just me. But the Bible tells us that regardless to what they're doing or who they're hurting, we need to be willing to forgive. And, and everybody, everybody here has been hurt by somebody in a way that you have not forgiven them yet. And if you, you act, now come on now, acting like you forgive somebody is different than actually forgiving them. I'm gonna turn the page because I know I got it on this page. Forgiveness is that person come around you 
and your body chemistry does not change. Are you following me? In other words, you don't break out in a cold sweat or you don't scoot over to the other side, right? Or you don't look at the person in their face. Come on, you know how it is. When you're upset with somebody, you don't want them to even look at you. And you'll tell the person standing to you, you better not come over here. Right? They still owe me this, so they did this to me. The Bible is trying to tell us when we're like that, see, we're living in the last days of Earth's history. We don't have time for what we, these things we call big, they are petty in the sight of God. They're unnecessary suffering that we put on ourselves and the people to whom has done us wrong. Do you know your job is to win souls to Christ? I'll say it again. Your job is to win souls to Christ. So when people do you wrong, you ought to be looking for a salvific way of winning them to Jesus. And the first step in that is forgiveness. I don't care who it is. You know, at work, people can really, really bring up that unforgiving spirit, right? Because you can treat a stranger like a stranger. Well, y'all didn't get that? <laughs> yeah, but, but we have to win them too. Amen. So this, 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 spirit, this spirit of forgiveness is something that God wants us to get a hold to. And God is telling us over and over again, look, if you can't forgive, I'm not going to forgive you. If you can't let it go, I'm not going to let it go. Can you imagine God holding over you just some of the stuff that you've done? You notice I didn't say all. Some of the stuff you've done. And, and those who are not willing to forgive don't realize it, but you're being weighed down. What do you think the Bible means when it says, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you? If you're not casting him on Jesus, you carry him around yourself. This is why you have some people who are just mad all the time. You ever seen people who never smile? Come on, Christianity is serious. But you ought to be happy in Jesus. Amen? Because you know what God has brought you through. But when you harbor unforgiveness in your heart, it is hard to smile. It's hard to trust. Are you following me? Listen, if you can't trust your brothers and sisters, how are you going to trust God whom you've never seen? Are, are you following me? And yes, I know. The Bible says put no trust in no man. Come on now. But the Bible also says in the book of Corinthians that we ought to believe all things. Trust all things. Right? Are you following me? Because it is, it is something, it's an attribute of God. It's not of us. Amen? So, so the question is, how in the world can we get to that point? How in the world can we get to the point to where we can, we can, People can do stuff to us and it won't affect us. The only way, the only way we can bring about or destroy this unforgiving spirit is to get connected with the one who has done it all along. Amen. Are you following me? Is, is, is to have Jesus live out his life in you. See, some of us know what that's like. Somebody do us wrong and we want to cuss them out, but we bless them. Are you following me? Yeah, somebody, somebody do us wrong, do, us, do some dirt to us, and we in ourselves want to go find something to do to them. Do you know your kindness? This is why this is what drove people crazy about Jesus is because they did him wrong and he loved them anyhow. I mean, how many of you would actually say this? While, while dying at the hands of the one who is killing you. Lord, forgive them. They know not what they do. Only, 
only through Jesus can that happen. So now I'm going to say this. If you still have a grudge or a, a, a something against somebody, whether they're in your family, whether they're outside your family, then you don't have the spirit of God in you. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how often you come to church. I don't care how much you read your Bible. If you are harboring a spirit of unforgiveness, you do not have the spirit of God in you. Because Jesus don't function like that. Jesus is always willing to forgive. And saints of God, we need to get like that. And the only way you can get like that, if you invite the Holy Ghost to live in you. And and, and I'm going to tell you this. When you invite the Spirit of God in you, the Spirit of God is going to tell you to do some stuff that you don't want to do. Y'all get what I'm saying? Because the Bible says the carnal mind is enmity against God. Right? There's a hatred in the carnal mind against God. So so just because you don't feel like doing it, do it anyway. Right? Just because you don't feel like loving them, love them anyhow. We need to get this spirit out of our church. Because it's hindering us from doing God's work. You cannot witness for God if God ain't in you. We need to first acknowledge the fact that we have an unforgiving spirit. First thing. Acknowledge. Yep, I have an unforgiving spirit. I don't like so-and-so. I don't quite remember what they did to me, but I don't like them. Are you following me? We need to acknowledge the fact that we have an unforgiving spirit. This is what we have to do with every sin. And remember, the Bible says that we are lay aside all those sins that so easily beset us. And see, this is one that is stealth. Because we we can harbor an unforgiving spirit and still think we're walking with God. We can have hatred for somebody who's sitting over here and we sitting over there and think we're going to make it. But saints, I'm telling you, it doesn't work like that. God has to be in us and he wants to have all of us, not some of us. Some of us who had spouses that treated us bad. And we still don't like them. Right? We have siblings who've done us wrong. Right? You let them live in your house, eat your food. Come on, somebody know what I'm talking about. You bought their first clothes for them, and they did that behind your back. You need to forgive them too. Right? That, that son or that daughter who you raised, you spent all your time praying and watching over, trying to keep the clothes on his back, a roof over their head, and they had the audacity to do such and such. You need to forgive them too. Forgiveness is not something that comes natural to us, but it is possible for us because the Bible says all things are possible through Christ. And we need Christ today. Not yesterday, but today. And I'm going to tell you, I, when I was going through this thing, I start remembering, you know, you remember people. Well, the spirit of God will bring people to remembrance who you haven't forgiven yet. The spirit of God will remind you of that individual to whom you still holding a grudge against. Who you still harboring ill feelings about. Listen, people can do us the most. You know, there are people who were molested. Come on now. There are people who were molested 
And, and because of that, that individual who did that thing to them, now that's an awful thing, isn't it? That's an awful thing. Especially when it's done to a child. Are y'all following me? But guess what? God said you have to forgive them too. You have to forgive them. Even if they don't accept your forgiveness, you forgive them. And I'm talking about true forgiveness. Like, it doesn't bother you anymore to be in their presence. You know why people are struggling so much? And there are some horrible things that happen to us when we're young and as we grow up. Horrible things. And some things, there are some people sitting here who've been through some stuff you ain't never shared it with nobody. And it's still messing you up. You know why it's messing you up? Because you never forgave the individual who did it. Once you've forgiven, once you've forgiven, you've unshackled yourself. You freed yourself from the power that the enemy had over you. Because this is what the devil does. He takes that thing and he mentioned it to you and then you, that spirit of unforgiveness swells up in you all over again. This is why some of us have difficulty with relationships. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You've had 12 boyfriends, 13 girlfriends, Come on now. Preach. And still going. Because of something that happened to you, something that's in you that you have not let go of yet. Oh, God wants us to be free. Yes. Amen. Haven't you been a prisoner for so long, too long? It, it, it's time to be free. And some of us have no idea what freedom is. We hear it talked about, we don't know. Because we're still holding on to things that's holding us back. Forgive one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. And see, always look at it from what you're supposed to see it as. Now, you say it's horrible because it happened to you. But what about what you've done to God? What about what you continually do for God? You know what? If my child, if I explain something to my child and he do mess up and, and he keeps doing it over and over again, whew. I believe what the Bible says about the beat, the child, and they will not die. I will continually lay hands on that child to get that child back in line. Are you following me? But look how God loves us. He never, ever, ever forsakes us. Never. And, and we continually mess up. All the time. And I, you know, I have confidence when I say it because you're human beings. And you all still here. There is no Enoch's among us. If you were Enoch, you wouldn't be here. That means you're still struggling with something and God is trying to fix it in you. And over and over again, this thing keeps coming up in your mind. God keeps bringing it back to your remembrance so that you can give it to him. Saints, you ain't got to tell anybody else, but you have to tell Jesus. Amen. And I mean, tell him. Now, this is no fake thing. This is not something that's arbitrary. You talk to God as to a friend. And God will fix that thing for you. Now, there are some of us who have to go to the individual because we know who they are. And we are still in contact with them, hating them all the time. Right? An animosity. And I've seen it in the church. Yeah, I've seen some of y'all give him fake hugs. Come on now. It's the truth anyhow. You hugging them just because you're in church. Come on now. We need to be real about this thing, amen? We need to be serious about this thing because God is serious. And God wants to save us. But we have to allow him to do that. And God gave me this. And I'm going to tell you, I had to pray about this thing. I had to go through this thing myself. And let me tell you something, when you do decide to forgive that individual, you're going to have a bunch of people who are going to be telling you, you should never forgive that person for what they've done. I can't believe you did that. But who are you going to follow? Jesus. God or man? Jesus. And we've read over and over again in the scripture where the Bible tells us if, if you're not willing to forgive them individuals, God cannot 
Oh, you don't hear that. God cannot forgive you. And if you got sin in your life, you are not going to heaven. Because in heaven, there is going to be no sin. Sin is going to be done away with. And if you hold on to sin, you know that's the whole purpose of hell's fire is to destroy sin. Wow, blank faces. <laughs> hell's fire is to destroy sin. That's what it's for. And if you hold on to that sin, you're going to burn with it. And God is over and over again inviting us to let go of it. And just like it was my opportunity to, to, to acknowledge the fact that there are some folk I don't like. And I'm talking about in my family. Y'all got families like that? Yes. Come on now, tell the truth. Yes. Some of us got them folk we don't can't stand in our family. They're always starting stuff. Yeah. Right? You just want to keep them away from you. Matter of fact, if you like me, you told them, don't come around my family no more. But we have to get to the point where we can forgive them. And when you do, let me tell you something. Oh, hallelujah. You will experience something in God that you have not yet experienced. Because I'm going to tell you, listen, all of us had an experience with God, but we haven't had a full experience if we're still holding to a, on to a, a spirit of unforgiveness. Because God wants to give us a glimpse of who he is, right? He want to send his spirit to rest on us, to touch us, so that we can see what we're missing. So we've had a slight experience, but if you want a full experience of Jesus, you got to let that thing go. And then you can experience true joy. Peace. You know, peace is when you don't have no guilt. Right? There, there's no war in your mind about this or about that. And you'll be comfortable around your brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Amen. And it's time that we become the family of God that God intended for us to be. Amen. Amen. So after our acknowledgement, <laughs> after our acknowledgement, we have to let God in. We have to let God have control of every aspect. So, so what the spirit does is he will direct you to who you need to apologize to or who you need to ask for forgiveness. And guess what? When I'm saying ask for forgiveness, it's not necessarily just somebody doing something to you. It's what you've done to somebody else. Because some of us have done some stuff to some people and we just like, they won't forgive me. Well, you haven't forgiven them yet. And this spirit permeates the church. But when you let God in, God will show you. And, and, and God gave me that opportunity as I went through this week, looking at this, 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 this study. And now he's given you that opportunity today. And let me say this. Tomorrow is not promised you. Nobody told you that you was going to make it through this day. Did you hear what I said? You can walk out them doors and go to sleep. Are you following me? Because the devil wants to kill you in your sin. He wants to kill you before you can make things right. Because he wants as many of us with him as possible when he burns. Saints, now's the time for you. Now is the time for you to make things right with God. And the only things you can make things, make things right with God, the only way you can do that is to make things right with one another. If, if you are currently harboring something against one of your brothers and sisters here in the church right now, then you need to fix it. You need to fix it. And you, let me tell you what works. Even if you don't like somebody, you go up to them, you approach them, you share with them that thing, whatever that thing is, and then you pray. It's hard to be mad and pray at the same time. Come on now. It's hard to be upset and pray at the same time. It's hard to dislike somebody if, if you're kneeling with them and praying. Because the Holy Ghost gets in the midst of that. Because he says where two or three are gathered together, I'm in the midst. So if you're gathered together, listen, you don't have to 
To approach somebody, you don't have to like them. Just go with the spirit that you want God to work it out. Even if you're still upset with them, go with the spirit that God, you have to work this thing out and God will work it out for you. And this is not just to benefit you, but it's to benefit the individual who have done this thing to you. See, God is wonderful because he fixes us as he fixes other people. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. I mean, we think God is concentrating on us, but he's fixing you so a whole bunch of other folk can be fixed too. Amen. But we have to be willing. Yes. Always remember, forgiveness is a choice. You choose to forgive. And God will take it from there. Don't worry about how or how I'm going to get this thing out. No, no. You do your part and God will do his part. And, and, and don't listen. God can wipe that stuff out your mind. You won't forget what happened, but it won't bother you no more. And that's what, what needs to happen. You don't need it to bother you no more. So, I've said enough on that. Now God wants to give you an opportunity to get it right. Amen? Amen. Don't let nobody else make a decision for you. Don't worry about what other people think or what they say. Because if you like me, I want to see Jesus. I want to look on his lovely face. I want him to hold my hand. I want to be able to hug Jesus. And don't get me wrong. I want to walk on streets of gold. I want the mansion that he promised me. But ultimately, I want to see Jesus. And if you want to see Jesus, we have to let go of all this stuff that is in us. It's hindering us from our experience with God. Can you bow your heads with me? Father, what a word you've given us, forgiveness. Father, there are some of us here right now who are still harboring a spirit of unforgiveness. And we know, Lord, for so long you've been working with us, trying to get us fixed on this thing. You keep bringing the person around us. You keep bringing them up in our minds and yet we have not given them over to you yet. But now you've given us another opportunity. And Father, we want to thank you for that. We want to thank you for this opportunity. We want to thank you, Father, that you allowed us to, to remember those things that we should let go of. That your spirit may have a full reign in our hearts and minds, Lord, that we may experience who you really are, that we may taste and see that you are so good. Now, there are those who are here who are struggling with this thing, and, and you don't have to tell anybody about what you're going through or what, what has happened to you, but this is your opportunity to talk to Jesus, to talk to the master healer, to talk to the one who's altogether lovely. To talk to the one who can fix it in your life. No matter what it is. No how bad it is. How bad you think it is. This is your opportunity to give it to God. Now we're going to pray. And we're going to ask God to help us to forgive those who we have not forgiven yet. We're going to ask God to fix this thing in us that we will not harbor this spirit of unforgiveness any longer. And for some of us, this might be our last opportunity. So we need to take advantage and do what God is asking us to do. So to solidify this thing, I'm going to ask that Anyone who wants special prayer, for whatever reason, especially that we might get rid of this spirit of unforgiveness, I'm gonna ask that you will come forward and we're just gonna pray. We're just gonna pray. We're not gonna ask what happened or who happened or what, what. we just wanna give it to Jesus. 
And this is your opportunity to publicly, in the presence of the Holy Spirit, to allow him to work this thing out in your life. This is not for show. This is for your salvation. It's for you. And if you need to come up and pray for somebody else who you know needs to help, who you know is struggling with unforgiveness, then you need to come and pray for them. Sometimes we need someone to intercede for us. And this is the time that you can do it. Don't hold back. This is your opportunity. God is listening even now. He never intended for us to leave this place the same way we came in. For those of you who have stayed in your seats, I'm going to ask that you will humbly bow. That we can seek the Lord together. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, for reminding us that even unforgiveness can keep us out of heaven. We thank you for reminding us that we need you to get rid of this spirit of unforgiveness. So Father, as your people who came forward, Lord, are kneeled before you right now, I'm praying, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you will help them to overcome this spirit of unforgiveness. Even now, give them the strength, Lord. Give them the wherewithal, Father, to approach those and to speak with them. And if they cannot speak to them, Lord, to speak to you and give that thing over to you. Father, it needs to be taken from us. We have held on to it for oh so long. We no longer want the guilt. We no longer want to feel the pain, Lord, the disappointment, Father, that is prevalent in this life, Lord. We want to experience Jesus and the peace that he promised and the joy that he promised. So, Father, right now, this moment, we're praying, Lord, that you will remove the spirit of unforgiveness from us. Send your spirit to rest in our hearts, Lord. And as your spirit rests in us, show us what we need to do, Lord, to get it right. Please, Father, for we cannot do it on our own. Some of us, Father, Father, right now are still unwilling to do it, Lord, but Father, help us in our willingness. Some of us don't even believe this thing is going to work. Lord, help our unbelief. Help us to cling to your spirit, Lord, and fix us. Now, Lord, for those of us, Father, who, are, who have been suffering from wrongdoings, Lord, from from what somebody done to us, somebody who hurt us badly, Lord. We're praying, Lord, right now that we can forgive them. Help us to forgive them in our hearts first, Lord, even before we approach them. Help us to forgive them right now, this moment, Lord, while we're near before you, Father, for you told us if we ask, you'll give it to us. So we're asking right now that you would do this for us, Father. Please. And Father, we... We'll be careful, Lord, that when you give us that joy that you promised, when you give us that peace that you promised, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor for what you're going to do. Thank you, Father, for what you've done thus far. Thank you for giving us a, a mind and a, the heart to come forward and to kneel before you and ask you to help us, Lord. Thank you. Now bless us, Lord. Keep us, strengthen us, Father, and remove this unwanted spirit and give us your free spirit at this moment we pray and we thank you and all God's people said amen